Why does the sun rise in the morning? It traces its arc across the sky, illuminating my world, moving my shadow and warming my skin, before setting just as surely back into the sea. Why should it be like this? Why should anything happen at all? The mechanics of the solar system are very well understood and can be reduced to a mere handful of equations by modeling in the context of force, mass, and a measurable distance between celestial bodies. The sun itself is hardly a trivial object, yet the enormous power of the scientific method now enables us to write down, on a single sheet of paper, the blueprint for the nuclear engine that drives the brilliant heart of every single star. I can, and do, explain these concepts to people on a regular basis, but the question remains, why does it happen? My name is Tom. My work, indeed my life, involves teaching others about astronomy, helping them familiarize themselves with telescopes, and showing them the overwhelming majesty of the night sky. The universe is an endless ocean of treasures, often unbearably beautiful, and a single night under the stars can move a person very deeply. When you look up to see the Milky Way stretching out overhead, you can almost feel its immense weight bearing down on you, and know what it's like to be both very small and very significant at the same time. Every atom you are has descended from the cosmos, and you can now peer back consciously into deep space into deep time, at your own ancestry. Even if you're a long way from your house or flat, you can look at our galaxy and know that you're at home. I'm an atheist. This means I don't believe in the existence, physical or otherwise, of any god or gods. This includes all of the gods worshipped by members of the world's major monotheistic and polytheistic faiths, but also extends to non-specific or deistic interpretations of God, and supernatural beings in general. As a non-believer and a humanist, I live a rich and moral life, and I respect the rights of everyone to have their own gods and religions, even if I think they're untrue, provided that any actions inspired by their beliefs do not impair the well-being of other people. I do not believe we can expect an answer to the question of why anything happens nor do I see that this question has any relevance to our understanding of things. A question of purpose should be properly phrased within the context of consciousness, which itself is an emergent feature of the ever more complex nature of the brain. By all accounts, advanced brains are a relatively small-scale phenomenon in the cosmos, but even knowledge of a grand design and purpose would not, I propose, give us a satisfying answer to the question. Consider a universe which just exists, and one brought into existence by a creator who just exists. Both seem equally purposeless to me. In the latter case, only the creator can have reasons for our being, which are not our own, and we can never have a complete knowledge of why the creator makes its seemingly arbitrary choices. In the former case, which I believe to be an accurate statement, our reasons, emotions, and moral choices are products of the conscious mind, and are necessarily dependent on stimuli from the external, physical world. Purpose, morality, and our relationships are subjective, that is, dependent on the mind, with ambiguous, but discrete and definable objective underpinnings, because the mind is not separate from the physical construct of the brain. Unless we can control the smallest interactions in nature, and there is no reason to believe we can, free will is an illusion. Yet, however bleak this may seem, it remains that purpose, morality, spiritual experience and emotional energy are all real. Perhaps remarkably, the universe with God offers nothing at all that the atheist does not already accept, other than the illusion that our choices are truly free. But even if we fully embrace the notion that we do not have free will, we can still be happy, make others happy, and lead very fulfilling lives. Every day I feel a sense of purpose, even if it is just to write an email with the expectation that it will make the reader smile. There are many reasons I was inspired to put together this short essay, and every comment on this video was written for a purpose, born out of the conscious mind of the individual. Many of you are atheists. Are your lives empty? 
I've discovered among many atheists a shared desire to learn the story of our origins as revealed by the tools of scientific inquiry. Every detail in every field has its fan club. Everyone has a favorite fact about the world, sometimes deceptively obvious, sometimes quirky, sometimes very challenging to comprehend. It is obvious to me that these people take great fulfillment from learning about the world and sharing their knowledge with others. Even the smallest things can be wonderful, perhaps in their complexity, their appearance or the sounds they make. Our senses working alongside our brain can build a picture of reality which never ceases to amaze the curious explorer. The library of things to be known is vast indeed and free to everyone. I've only had 25 years to explore my surroundings and it already seems readily apparent to me that there is more to the world than I could ever experience by a wide margin. Even discounting the supremely rich and fascinating kingdom of creatures, climates and landforms, there remains a staggering wealth of cultural creations put on this earth by human beings to discover and appreciate. To those of you dissatisfied by this, insisting that it can't be, quote, all there is, demanding that there must exist some supernatural realm beyond the monotonies of the physical world, I cannot begin to understand your state of mind. I invite you to spend just one clear night looking upwards and outwards, and then dare you to suggest that there must be something more to life. I'm an atheist, and my universe is limitless.